October is National Domestic Violence Awareness Month, also known as Intimate Partner Violence Awareness Month. Approximately one in three women and one in four men will experience some form of intimate partner dating violence or domestic violence in their lifetime. It is very likely that someone you know is a survivor or may be suffering in silence. Nine long years have passed since Latrice Mays disappeared without a trace. In March 2013, a disturbing incident unfolded in Grand Rapids, Michigan, as police responded to a call from Latrice's home, which she shared with her boyfriend, Jalil Hoskins. The call had reported a domestic assault, but upon arrival, authorities found no evidence of a physical altercation. Latrice had called the police, claiming that Hoskins had grabbed her, and this marked the last time she was ever seen again. Concerned, when they couldn't reach Latrice, her family reported her missing the following day. Suspicion immediately fell on Hoskins, and on March 21, 2013, police questioned him about Latrice's whereabouts. He claimed ignorance, and forensic experts scoured their home for any signs of foul play. Over a month later, there was a breakthrough when Hoskins' cousin, Gregory Shanklin, was arrested and charged with perjury. Hoskins, initially taken into custody for a parole violation, was later charged with murder. The case took a shocking turn when Shanklin revealed that Hoskins had confessed to killing Latrice. According to Shanklin, he admitted to choking her at their home, wrapping her body in a sheet from her daughter's bed and disposing of it in a dumpster. This chilling revelation came two weeks after the alleged incident. The altercation between Hoskins and Latrice had erupted because a month earlier, Hoskins had stabbed Kenneth Harris, the father of two of Latrice's children, during a bar argument. Hoskins, desperate to avoid returning to jail, didn't want Latrice as a witness. In court, on May 22, 2013, Shanklin testified that the dumpster where Latrice's remains were placed was at the Peppercorn Apartments in Wyoming. Friends and family members of Latrice were deeply affected by this testimony, and despite initially denying involvement, Hoskins tearfully confessed to choking and killing Latrice in court. He was subsequently sentenced to 50 to 100 years in prison. Hoskins' demeanor quickly soured, but justice prevailed, and he remains behind bars. To this day, Latrice's remains have never been located. I'll say it once more. When someone shows you who they are, I beg you, please believe them. They don't change. They only get worse. If you or anyone you may know may have any information that may lead to the whereabouts of Latrice, please don't hesitate to reach out to your local authorities and help bring Latrice home. He just couldn't take it no more. That's something you have to live with. And just by seeing our crying faces and everything, um, I think it helped, you know, for him to admit to it. Well, and this all comes after yesterday. We were in the courtroom when, when they were detailing some of the things that happened, especially the preliminary hearing back in May. They talked about him uh, choking her, wrapping her in a bed sheet, taking her to a dumpster, and then, you know, and, and then her body going to the waste energy plant. And for you all to sit there and listen to that as family members just has to be absolutely heartbreaking to hear what happened to her. It's very heartbreaking. I mean, that's, that's it's unbearable pain to have to 
you know, deal with something like that. Um, it's not a, what a way to die. You know what I mean? So I still say we don't have a little bit closer because we still don't have her body and it's just gone. We just have to remember her in our heads, you know. I just still feel sad still because of that. It don't bring it. It's not going away. It'll never go away.